Good morning and welcome you all to Blissful Literati. We have been sharing some glimpses of our incredible India and as a part of it, we have already tasted the fragrant and piping hot bread of Goa, brought to India by the Portuguese colonizers. Now that we are full, let's go on a trek. Hold on, hear me out. I know all about this lockdown pinning us inside the safety of our homes. Trust me, I am bored myself. But I was actually talking about a virtual trip to Kurg, one of the incredible destinations that indeed make our country a Tullia. By the way, the Kodavus, that is the Kurgi people, they are really well known for their hospitality. Talk about Atithi Devo Bhava. So what are we waiting for? Let's start already with our tour coordinator, Dr. Lokesh Abrol. He is quite famous in his own field, but for those who don't know him yet, let me give a brief introduction. Mr. Abrol is a doctor by profession. He is a consultant on internal medicine. He is the founder director of Aravindam India and the ex-director of Health Prize India. He is the founder trustee of Vishnu Charitable Trust and established the first multi-speciality hospital in the private sector Gurgaon and also Gurgaon's first stray cow shelter which is known as Kam Dhenudham or Nandidham. His articles and photographs have been published in Outlook Traveller, Jet Wings, Swagat, Discover India, Srishti, Incredible India, Tashi Delek, which is a magazine in Bhutan. He maintains a travel blog which is you can find by the address www.indianhermitage.blogspot.com. Let us now talk about the theme of this text. As for themes, this text provides a glimpse in Indian culture. It provides a sharp social observation and tells us about its effect on graphic description. Finally, it provides an introduction to travelogue or travel writing. Now let us have a pictographic depiction of the place that we are about to visit. So this, this is Kurk, a land of gods. First of all, let's read the text. Midway between Mysore and the coastal town of Mangalore sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of God. This land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men, beautiful women and wild creatures. Kurg or Kodagu, the smallest district of Karnataka, is home to evergreen rainforests, spices and coffee plantations. Evergreen rainforests cover 30% of this district. During the monsoons, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. The season of joy commences from September and continues till March. The weather is perfect, with some showers thrown in for good measure. The air breathes of invigorating coffee. Coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under tree canopies in prime corners. So basically, Kurk is situated between Mysore and Mangalore. It is known as Scotland of India or the Kashmir of South. It is home to rainforests and coffee plantations and spices. The monsoons see heavy rainfall and the best time to visit is from September to March. Let us now have a look at some word meanings. First of all, some information. Kurk, also known as Kodagu or the Scotland of India, Kurk is a Postcut perfect landscape of sprawling tea and coffee plantations in the midst of misty hills, lush teak wood and sandalwood forests. Drifted from means to move slowly or get carried away gently. Martial, it is relating to soldiers or wars. Commences means begins. Good measure means in addition to the required amount. Invigorating, to feel more energetic. Canopies. Roof-like coverings that form shelters. Let us now move on to the next part. The fiercely independent people of Kurk are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent. As one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when Britain became impractical. These people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions, marriage and religious rites which are distinct from the Hindu mainstream. The theory of Arab origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered vest belt worn by the Kodavus. Known as Kupia, it resembles the Kufia worn by the Arabs and the Kurds. Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers. 
The Kurd Regiment is one of the most decorated in the Indian Army and the first chief of the Indian Army, General Karyappa, was a Kurgi. Even now, Koravus are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. So basically, Kurg constitutes of a proud race of martial men and beautiful women. People in Kurg claim the descent from Greek or Arabic roots. As you can see here, this is the traditional dress of Kurgi people, the kupia that they wore. And this dress is reminiscent of the Arabic tradition. Anyway, the Greek soldiers of Alexander's army settled down in India and married among the locals and propagated. That is one theory anyway. The martial traditions, marriage and other religious rites which are unique to the rest of India bears testimony to this assumption. The traditional Kurgi dress known as Kupia supports the Arabian descent theory as it resembles the Kafia worn by Arabs and the Kurds. Here we can see a Kurgi couple wearing the traditional Kurgi dress. The Kurgi people are also known for their hospitality and valor and intense patriotism. See, this is Mr. K. M. Karyappa, the first Indian commander-in-chief of the Indian Army. He was born in 28th January 1899 and died on 15th May 1993. On 15th January 1949, he became the first commander-in-chief of Indian Army and led the Indian forces on the Western Front during the Indo-Pakistan War of 1947. During the 1965 and 1971 wars, he visited the front lines to talk to the troops and keep their morale up. He had campaigned in Iraq, Syria and Iran. He was honored with the rank of Field Marshal in 1986. He is among the only two Indian Army officers to hold the highest rank of Field Marshal, the other being Field Marshal Sam Manikshaw. Now let us move on to the word meanings of this particular part. Embroidered. It means decorated in an ornamental way, stitched to the main body. Hospitality means friendly or welcoming behavior towards people. Tales of valor means stories of courage and bravery, especially in war. And most decorated means the maximum number of awards and honors received for their spectacular feat. Let us now go through the third and last part of this text. The river Kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of Kurk. Masir, a large freshwater fish, abound in these waters. Kingfishers die for their catch, while squirrels and langurs drop partially eaten fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect in the clear water. Elephants enjoy being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mahouts. The most laid-back individuals become converse to the life of high-energy adventure with river rafting, canoeing, rappelling, rock climbing and mountain biking. Numerous walking trails in this region are a favourite with trekkers. Birds, bees and butterflies are there to give you company. Macaques, Malabar squirrels, langurs and slender lorries keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. I do, however, prefer to step aside for wild elephants. The climb to the Brahmagiri hills brings you into a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kurk. A walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64-acre island of Nishargadham, running into Buddhist monks from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby Bailakup is a bonus. The monks in red ochre and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of India, right here in Kurk. Let's have a look at the nature trails of Kurk. So Kurk offers a spectacular lush landscape. The river Kaveri flows through the heart of Kurk as you can see here. And this is the Mahasir, the famous fish that abounds in these waters. The wildlife add a splash of vibrant colors in the verdure of Kurg. Kurg offers various scopes for adventure sports and adrenaline pumping activities. Apart from the adventure sports, Kurg offers refreshing tricks for some meditative soul searching, leading to some most wonderful panoramic view of the entire landscape. This landscape, this is the Brahmagiri Hills. 
and a hidden monastery, Buddhist monastery, right in the heart of India. As you can see here, on one hand we have the view of Brahmagiri Hill and on the other hand we have the Nisargadham project on river Kaveri. Let us come to the word meanings of this particular section. Laid back, lazy or relaxed in an unhurried manner, river rafting, a recreational outdoor activity which use an inflatable raft to navigate a river of varying degrees of rough water. Rappelling, the act of going down a very steep slope by holding on to a rope that is fastened to the top of the slope. Trails, a makeshift path through countryside, mountain or forested area, chiefly for walking. Trekkers, a traveller who hikes through mountainous country. Panoramic view, a complete and wide view of the entire area of land. Ochre, earthy pigment ranging from light yellow to brown or red. Now, we have come to the end of this chapter. But before we leave, let's have a brief discussion on the nature of this travelogue. You see, a forgotten piece of heaven on earth, Kurg, never ceases to fascinate the visitors that flock to this land of gods nestled in verdant abundance. A visit to Kurg delights all the senses. The visual delights blend perfectly with the olfactory treat in the form of coffee and spices. Despite its beautiful outlook, Kurg is not just beauty but brawn as well. Kurgi people are well known for their valor and bravery and are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without license. Majestic elephants, colorful birds, buzzing bees and vibrant butterflies. Kurg never fails to mesmerize the visitors with its abundant natural wealth. Adventure sports or some quiet soul searching, Kurg has something to offer everyone. The writer in his travelogue infuses Kurg with the heart and soul of India that is truly incredible. With this, we come to the end of our trip. Indeed, this chapter with its vivid description tries or at least takes us away from the confines of our home to this wide abundance of nature. Hope you enjoyed the journey as much as I personally did. If you have any questions or any doubts, you can leave a comment anytime. Thank you till we meet again and bye bye.